Well, he's been called the Merchant Prince of Retail. J. Crew CEO Mickey Drexler prides himself on being involved with everything from the aesthetic of the product to the execution of the sale. In an exclusive interview, Mickey Drexler told me why the company did guide down twice in 2010 before shareholders agreed to take the retailer private. And just what is happening at the register right now? You will find companies in the fashion business are never going to go straight up. And I always said this to our investors, it's long term. And I run this company with our team. We're all long term focused. I've always been that way. You will never find a business with a straight up line. Mm -hmm. It's fashion. And by definition, uh, you're going to have some stops and starts. And by the way, you know, that's true of any fashion business. Uh, but yeah, we did warn and we met our warnings and so on and so forth. So with gas prices on the rise, I mean, I would imagine there's more ebb than there's flow these days. Look, we, we, every month is a month, a quarter is a quarter. There's so much more. This is a, a long term thing. And I've dealt with more ebbs and flows in my career. It's the nature of the beast and the nature of one's of business. Mm -hmm. At the same time, though, you've got cotton prices, what, at pre-Civil War yes, yes. spikes there, there's so been high this year. So yes. you're going to have to raise prices. Well, you know, we, merchandising is kind of a balance and a mix in a basket. So there's a basket of goods, there's a basket of styles. We, uh, you know, I know some companies are going 10% across the board. Uh, it's very simple. What we're doing is, uh, you know, we're not doing what I read the food companies are doing, making the boxes smaller mm -hmm. and raising prices. Uh, we're not taking any quality out of our clothes because, you know, we live this business for quality and integrity. And with that, over time comes earnings and growth. And that's been our mission. So uh, what we're doing is raising certain prices where we feel uh, we can afford to raise them. We're not raising prices on our expected, say, opening price value. I think it's merchandising and looking at what we do. No details coming off, no quality coming out. And I you're not changing sourcing because of that? No, too? not at all. I think the real issue for most merchants, which is interesting, and, I'm, and our own team is being forced to do this. When you go into any store, you'll see a lot of things on a markdown rack. And when you go online, you'll see a lot of things discounted both from the companies and from the discounters. There's a whole slew of new businesses out there discounting. We're investing cash in goods to get a return on our investment. Every merchant investor, and that's what we call them, the merchant investor, they say this is cash, not something you're buying because it's pretty. So we have to be much shrewder and wiser about our investments in all things we buy and hopefully get higher returns. But is the consumer buying more or less than last well, year? What, what we're feeling is uh, she and he are shopping more, they're comparing more. Uh, the growth of the online discounters and designer brands and all that is kind of amazing. I think they're buying much more shrewdly, they're, they're shopping more carefully, they're revisiting, and frankly, they're looking for great value. So yeah. the traffic's there, but the conversion, it sounds like, is what's being eaten into. People well, are they're walking uh, in, but they're not necessarily pulling the trigger. It's just not, look, it's not the high tide right now. Yeah. Although I looked at some of the numbers uh, recently, and there will be companies that always do well. And the companies that do well, by the way, I think are the ones that dominate in their categories. There's a lot of people put the goods out there, and we have a rough season. We put the goods out, and we have a lot of markdowns. And, uh, and more and more markdowns drive people away from regular price, in theory. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're, that's why the investment aspect is so critical. Don't you? When you said things were getting a, a, a rockier a little bit, do you think that was about the merchandising or do you think that was about the consumer? Uh, look, I always blame us first, okay? So when they get rockier, uh, we had an extraordinary 2010, and this is not excuse talk. Uh, we felt it getting rockier because we were up against some ex an extraordinary special year of huge growth, two years growth in a year. So we felt it with us. Look, at the end of the day, if you are in our business, no blame on the economy, on the consumer. You blame yourself first, because then your team blames themselves, and we all are in it together. It's not that you're blaming each other, but we certainly could have done a better job at the second half of last year on the merchandise. Uh, so you know what you do? You fix it. You can't cry over it. You just go fix it. It happens, and it happens a lot in our industry. It's just that uh, you're under a microscope, and people notice that, especially you know, when, when you're on a roll like we've been. And then we said in August, we're forecasting a tough, we f it was easy to see it coming. Mm -hmm. We had too many ruffled shirts this year. We sold millions and trillions last year. We had maybe too much of this and not enough of this. It's merchandising, it's the business we're in, and it's a natural ebb and flow 
of, uh, of the fashion business. J. Crew shareholders voted in favor of the $3 billion takeover by the retailer of the retailer by TPG Capital and Leonard Green. But some investors have accused the company of diluting the offer price by refusing to work with firms other than TPG. Since Mickey Drexler took over as CEO in 2003, he's more than doubled revenue, expanded sales, and he brought the company to the public markets. In an exclusive interview, I asked Mickey what J. Crew can now do as a private company that he couldn't do with a public one. You know, it wasn't it wasn't my choice. First of all, it was the shareholders' choice. Uh, the uh, TPG and Leonard Green uh, made an offer to the board, uh, which uh, the shareholders unanimously voted for. And so it wasn't a matter of a choice. Uh, I was very comfortable. Uh, look, if you're a public company today. There's no long term on public. We have some great shareholders and they're still great people, but they don't own our shares anymore. No long term, you mean because the, the, the pressure to always meet well, our expectations? Well, it's the pressure and we're not in the business for growth. We're in the business to run a great business, to invest in our business, to invest in our goods and do what we do well. But then the report card comes out, which is fair. I've been running companies for 30 years. The report card comes out. You get whacked, you go up, you go down. But they made a nice offer to the shareholders, I guess, because the shareholders voted uh, dramatically in favor of it. Well, it, it's, uh, yeah, it, well, it's, look, you got a lot of interest to pay every year, mm -hmm. you know, so. So you got to write those checks on interest. But easier is not easy. If you look at the, the balance sheet, you, you know, we have a balance sheet with more debt. We had no debt and a lot of cash. But no, it's, uh, I, I keep my, uh, you know, it, it's the vision of where you're going long term. And that's really the ultimate measurement of any company. It's nothing's a two year deal or a three year deal. Mm -hmm. To me, it's you, you think in, in years of five or 10 years to build a great business and beyond that. TPG and Leonard Green, $3 billion buyout of J. Crew. There was, as you said, shareholder approval, but you had to get involved to, to push this through because there was some controversy. There was Absolutely. controversy about waiting to tell the board seven weeks. There was controversy over who else should be involved in the auction. And I know you can't talk about it because of pending litigation, but in looking at the experience, I mean, would you do it again and do it again the same way? Well, uh, you know, we did everything according to the letter of the law. Um, and yeah, I, I would do it the same way uh, because a lot of this comes with the territory. Um, I'm not experienced in it. This is my first going public to private uh, and I have terrific partners with that. Yeah, I think, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have another alternative or better answer, but I think we, I know we did everything right. Mm -hmm. um, and we're all very excited. And you know, the other difference is we have a lot more owner operators in the company now than we had before. And I love companies, well, it's a personal feeling about our own business, where people have an investment in the business. They care more about it, they have something at risk. A lot of companies, a lot of people, a lot of CEOs have nothing at risk. I mean, you say what you think, you're yeah. very straightforward. So you said you do everything the same way once again. Do well, you I, have any regrets? I mean, that idea that you weren't communicating seems not to be the Mickey Drexler that everyone knows. Well, you, you know, uh, first of all, I can't comment because of litigation. You, I know you understand that. I do. Um, I would do, uh, in other words, I, I sleep well at night. Uh, people write things. It's the way of America. And, you know. You think that the reporting was poor? No. Uh, you know, something I expected. It is what it is. I can't blame anyone. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, well, if you look at most uh, buyouts, et cetera, things happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm very comfortable with it. Look, first of all, no one ever says they wouldn't do anything differently. I wouldn't buy the same amount of the goods I see here, maybe the same in certain styles or whatever, but I'd have to think about that. You always had a stake. You had what? Well, Less I, than 10%. Well, you had, still had a significant yeah, stake. I had a in stake. G Initially, I, I purchased 10% of the company, and as it got diluted down a bit, yeah. I love having a stake because mm -hmm. you know every day you influence your own stake. And, and now we have, uh, I think about 20 of us have a stake. And I like the fact, I kind of call us owner operated. Uh, <laughs> and it does give you a sense, uh, unlike most companies where there's no risk, uh, there's no passion about it. And I kind of like and respect uh, more 
people who run a company where they care so much about it and they have a piece of it and they have a piece of it with their own uh, with their own equity at stake how much skin do you have in the game well I have I put a hundred million dollars which is public record uh, I reinvested a hundred million dollars in the company and by the way if it were two percent I'd feel the same way but uh, you know no I, I always felt like an owner-operator